Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I hope you'll indulge me for a minute as I read once again this text from Philippians. I think I'll get through it. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God in all remembrance you always in every prayer of mine for you, making my prayer with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to feel this way about you, because I hold you in my heart. For you are all partakers with me of the grace, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness, how I yearn for you all with the affection of Christ Jesus. And it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment, so that you may approve what is excellent, and be so pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and the praise of God. So far the words of our text for us this day. In the name of our Savior Jesus Christ, who was, who is, who is to come, dear beloved, in Him. Today's worship service brought to you by these. I'll keep them close. It was no surprise to me that as I prepared for this day, this epistle lesson was the one chosen because this would have been the text I would have chosen for this day. How powerful it is, what a wonderful name our God is, as we gather here this day. It's hard to pull together in an hour sermon all the things. <laughs> Didn't we just have one service today, so can I put, <laughs> can I put two or three together? Is that okay? Oh, I, there's a lot of music, so I figured I had to balance that out. Indeed, as you all know, so many thoughts, experiences, memories. So many times of laughter, a few tears as well, indeed, come to mind. So as I thought about, in the midst of so many emotions, what to speak to you this day, what to say, what to leave you with, I went right to where a preacher should, to the scriptures, to the text laid before us. It's always been my guide, and it will be again today. In the midst of what has already been a wonderful service, and as we prepare to celebrate and humbly be sent off, I bring three words from the text for us to consider and I pray take home with us this day and every day. The first word, thanksgiving. Paul starts with this. I thank God. To the church at Philippi, he loved this church. They were so wonderful in supporting him in both good times and in the rough times. In his imprisonment, still, they held fast to the truth. Even when threatened, even when they were worried about arrests and persecution, they held true, steadfast, to the truth. As we see in the text, he thanks them for partnering with him in this gospel message. What is that? The good news of who Jesus is. What he has done. How he is their savior. How he is the savior overall. What good news indeed. top of that, he knew he could count on them. He knew he could count on them. He counts them 
as a gift. Good words for me this day. You are a gift. You are and have been an incredible gift to me and to my family. And as I hold you in my heart, I'm thankful. I love this church. I love you. You have been incredibly supportive of me and my family in good times and in bad. It hasn't been easy. We live in a tough place. But we have yearned and held to the truth. Indeed, you've been my partner. We've walked through this together. Rolled up our sleeves together. Not one over another. Not anyone lording anything over another. But humbly serving as he calls us to do. Come four weeks on 4018 to a walk over here. To hearing in a meeting a statement made like this. We wonder if this church is soluble. Words that will always stick with me. Because my response then is the same as it is today. Yes, it is. God sustains his church. The planning retreats, the Bible classes, the youth events, the many outings that we've shared together, I thank you. Personally, I thank all of you who stayed here longer at night because you were talking to me. <laughs> I know you all wanted to go home. <laughs> I know you inched towards the door. Some of you even made it out of the parking lot. <clears throat> I didn't stop. So I apologize for those short nights where you were like, Pastor, I know you're excited about what we're talking about here, but I need to go home. I got to work in the morning. I thank you for that. Indeed, my heart is filled with thankfulness. The second word that Paul implements and I want to highlight in this text for today is the word confidence. Paul was confident in that Philippian church. He was confident that they would be there to the end. He talks about the resurrection. So, of course, you know, some of those early church people thought maybe he was coming back soon. Of course, we know he hasn't. And he was confident in them and in the faith that they had. He was confident in that church. He was confident in what they were all about. He uses those words to God who began this good work in you. He will keep it to completion. Not an if, not a I hope it'll happen. He knew it. What a promise for us this day. God has begun a good work in you. Many of you so long ago through the waters of holy baptism. What a joy it is to be confident in that. Simply put, Jesus is our confidence. He is the one who lived for us died in our place, rose again so that we might live with him forever. Paul, in talking to the church, says, look what he's done. In the midst of all these things, you are more than conquerors. Even in the midst of the struggle and the pain, your hope is built in him on nothing else but Jesus Christ and his righteousness. He was confident in them because of the confidence he had in Jesus. As I hold you in my heart, I indeed share that confidence in you and the work that he is doing here. In what he has done at this time and at this place. How do I know that? Because I know you. I know you. And what you have done, what you have shared, how you have cared, that your confidence, I pray, only grows in Jesus the Christ. Indeed, we will falter and fail. 
guilty. But our confidence, thanks be to God, is not in you or in me. But our confidence is in Christ. Even though we falter and fail, he doesn't, he won't. Music is such an important part of worship. The sounds, the singing, the band. Sorry, James, we're moving a little bit here, but that's okay for today. <laughs> Might be hard to hear. Take drink, this is my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. What a beautiful sound it is when we see and experience, even more than that, receive Jesus as he is, as the host and the feast. That's why we sing what a beautiful name, because he is just That the good work that God has created in you will also continue. He will hold on to you. He will keep you in the faith. Paul is confident. So am I. The last word to share with you on this day. No surprise. Paul prays that the Philippians would abound more and more in love. With love. Not just a feeling that you have inside, but action, a verb, a going out. Seeking what is excellent and pure, honorable and just, commendable and lovely. Paul saw the love so many times. A couple, one like Lydia who offered a home to him. The jailer, when everything's crashing around and he's ready to kill himself, Paul says, whoa, 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 we're fine, we're safe, don't do it. And then he comes to faith, and his family, and he also helps Paul with his wounds. Paul seeing the church at work, and he loved them for it. As I hold you in my heart, prayer is the same, that you will continue abounding in love all the more, that you will continue to receive his love, and as you've heard me say a bunch of times before, give it away, that you will speak the truth, but do it in love, knowing that the God of peace will be with you. Go. Be his witnesses. As I heard the very first week I was here, the theme of that time, shine. Go and shine. Shine the love of Jesus that he has given to you. The last hymn we just sang, if any of you are still alive when I go to be with Jesus, is one that will be played at my funeral. Christ be my Savior in calm as in strife. Death cannot hold me, for he is the life. Nor darkness, nor doubting, nor sin and its stain can touch my salvation. With Jesus, I reign. I pray Christ continues to be your leader. As you are built up in thanksgiving, in confidence, and in love. Knowing this, you will always be held in my heart. In his name, amen. 
May the peace of God, which does surpass all our human understanding, guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting.